Hi friends, in one of my recent videos, I shared with you step by step process of how to find stocks that have massively corrected, but are fundamentally good stocks. And that video was watched by 3 lakh plus people within the first seven days. So thank you for all your love and support and lovely comments that you shared on that video. And while I was going through the comments on that video, I found this comment that says, Main gadhe nahi ghode lena chahunga. And it really made me chuckle. Because the confidence nowadays the retail investors like you and me are having is just amazing that people are becoming more and more aggressive when it comes to stock market. And they're also not only looking at the stocks that have been hugely corrected, but they are looking at the horses, meaning the stocks that are in huge bull run or the stocks that are in momentum and they want to also ride the tide. But most people do not get the logic to select the stocks that are in momentum but fundamentally good and have further rooms to continue to rally is what I want to talk about in this video. The content that I will present to you in this video, people are not even talking about it in their courses that they're selling for 50,000 rupees. By the way, I don't sell any courses. I only teach on this channel absolutely at zero cost and if you like this type of content humble request for you to like the video let me know in the comments a simple thank you that will motivate me to come up with more such videos with that let's get this video started so let me take you to tickertape.in which is a free website that you can use and the first thing that we are going to do is create a new screen and i am only interested in large cap stocks for this analysis so if i go to market cap i will select large cap i am doing this analysis for large cap but you can do this analysis for small cap or mid cap depending on your personal needs. So let us say I've selected large cap here. It gives me 100 stocks. Now my first task is to find out out of these 100 stocks, which are the stocks that are right now in bull run. Now, what is the definition of bull run? People who don't understand the most commonly accepted definition of bull run is the stocks that have given 20% increment in their prices. Right now, this is a simple definition, but as my video title says, I am interested in only those stocks that have given massive bull run. Now, my definition of massive bull run is the stocks that have given more than 20% returns versus the nifty returns, right? So for me, nifty is the reference point. So in the last one year, for example, nifty has given close to 17% returns. So those stocks that have given more than 20% than nifty returns. So, so the stocks that have given close to 37% returns in last one year, I am calling them being in massive bull run. Again, this is my definition. You might have your own logic and criteria to define your own massive bull run definition. For that, what I'm going to do is add a filter here, which will be last one year return versus nifty return. So let's go ahead and add that here. And now let me sort these stocks out by one year returns versus nifty and you will see some of the stocks here for example rec limited power finance corporation limited irfc have given more than 200 percent return so for example here rec limited in absolute terms in the last one year at the time of recording this video has given 260 percent returns but from a nifty as a reference point it has given 245 percent returns because nifty has also appreciated by 17% closely in the last one year. Now, by the way, I am taking these names. It doesn't mean I am recommending these stocks to you. Please do not take any of the stocks that I'm talking about here as stock recommendation because I'm not a SEBI registered advisor. I'm showing you and sharing with you my methodology of how I go about selecting the stocks that are in massive bull run. So out of these 100 stocks, let us filter out those stocks that have given more than 20% returns versus nifty returns, right? So a simple filter criteria we are going to put here that one year return versus nifty returns. We are only interested in those stocks that have given more than 20% returns from a nifty reference point perspective. And that gives us total 37 stocks. So out of the 100 large cap stocks, we have got to 37 stocks that have given more than 20% returns than nifty return in the last one year. I call these stocks as stocks that are in massive bull run in the last one year. Now the next question is out of these 37 stocks, how do we find out the stocks that are likely to sustain this momentum that are likely to remain on the growth path is what our question is. And out of the 37 stocks, which stocks are likely to see correction? Therefore, we should avoid those stocks. Because please remember, if you are investing in horses or stocks that are in momentum, the speed that at which they grow, they can also get corrected by the same speed. So it's extremely important that you understand that these are stocks that ultra aggressive risk people only should invest in. Now, if you do not have the right skills, or you do not have time to do this type of analysis, what you can do is you can consider investing in small cases. 
because in small cases you get to invest in a basket of stocks that is picked by the experts but please go for only sebi registered small cases if in case you want to consider small cases as one of the investment avenues for example small cases constructed by a company called gulak which is part of the st advisors is a sebi registered investment advisor with more than 12 plus years of experience and the beauty is that gulak's portfolios are constructed by analyzing more than 130 parameters One of the small cases from Gulak that I personally like is Gulak Gear 6 because in this small case the stocks are selected based on the systematic rule based approach. And the second reason I like this small case is because this small case is sector agnostic as well as market cap agnostic. Meaning this small case selects stocks from every sector or from every market cap for example large cap, small cap, mid cap as long as the stock is showing the right fundamentals and right technical indicators and when it comes to rebalancing the small case every month they rebalance the stock so when to exit a stock when to add a stock their experts do it for you and they conduct monthly webinars to explain to you the details about what their portfolio is going through in terms of the rebalancing and you can ask your questions as well sandeep tyagi and vivek sharma are the brains behind gulak and their team have more than 50 years of experience in this space If you are interested to find out more about this small case you will find the link in the description or in the pinned comments you can go and check out Now coming back to these 37 stocks we need to find out which stocks out of these 37 stocks are likely to continue the bull run For that one of the criteria that I personally use is how many of these stocks are still trading at lower valuation than the sector valuation and for that we are going to use two simple parameters let me show you let's go ahead and add those two filters so i am going to go and say pe minus sector pe is one of the filters now you may not find this filter it is a custom filter that i have built but please google it you will understand how to create custom filters on this free website so let us go ahead and add that and the second filter that i am interested is in pb minus sector pb so let us go ahead and add those Now we are only interested in those stocks that are trading at lower PE than the sector PE and also trading at lower PB than the sector PB meaning that there is still a lot of juice left in these stocks from a sector perspective if we compare them from a sector perspective so for that what we are going to do is we are only going to look at those stocks that have got PE minus sector PE in negative right so let us go ahead and put that here so i'm going to say zero here let us go and get those filters operated let me say pb minus sector pb is also less than 0 here so that gives us total 16 stocks now what are these 16 stocks these 16 stocks are trading at a lower pe than their respective sector and they are also trading at a lower pb than their sector pb means they have lot of juice left in them from a sector valuation perspective does this now mean that we should go ahead and invest in these 16 stocks absolutely not i would want us to put more rigor in our selection process now out of these 16 stocks we need to understand the stocks that are likely to grow fundamentally in the upcoming quarters that will tell us whether the stock prices are going to soar or not so for that what i am going to use is three simple parameters on this websites one of them is let us go ahead and add that is one year forward revenue growth right also i want to add one year forward ebitda growth from a profitability perspective also i want to add one year forward eps growth let us go ahead and add these three filters here now you will see that from a one year forward revenue growth perspective for example indian oil corporation limited is now showing minus 10% meaning that this financial year it is going to decline from a revenue perspective by 10% right now would you want to invest in such stocks well i wouldn't want to invest in such stocks because by the end of this year if the revenues of this stock is likely to fall by 10% what is likely to happen is that people might want to start booking their profits on this stocks the moment the revenues start to fall right so i would like to avoid that situation because i only want to invest in those stocks where the prices are likely to go up right so for that what i am going to do is i am going to remove any stocks from this list which is likely to give me revenue growth in negative so i will only select the ones which are going to give me positive revenue growth right so that gives me seven stocks the same logic goes with the one year forward ebitda growth what is the ebitda that we are expecting this year versus the last year so let us go ahead and only take the ones that are showing me the positive trend right now for the year that gives us six stocks and lastly from a eps growth perspective what is eps earning per share and all of you must be aware of the pe formula pe is actually price of the share divided by the earning per share so if the earning per share of a stock goes up that means the pe comes down that means the stock 
becomes more valuable in the market right so for that let us only consider the stocks that are going to give us the positive eps growth because it will bring the p to the lower level and that will make the stock more valuable right so for that what we are going to select is a positive value here zero more than zero percent and that gives us six stocks so these six stocks are the stocks that have shown massive bull run and also right now trading at lower PE and lower PB than the sector PE and PB. Also their one year forward forecast from a revenue perspective, from a EBITDA perspective, from a EPS perspective is looking positive. Now, does this mean that we should go ahead and invest in these six stocks? Still not because you do not invest in any stocks without doing the proper full fundamental analysis. Now what I will do is let me show you one of the stocks in terms of how I go about doing the full fundamental analysis and what I would expect you to do is if you want to invest in any of the stocks you need to do a thorough fundamental research at your end before you take any positions. So among these six stocks let me pick up one sample stock and show you how to do the full analysis on that stock. So I'm going to pick up Hero Moto Corp Limited as a sample stock. Again, not a recommendation. I'm just doing the analysis and showing you my method of doing the analysis. So if you look at Hero Moto Corp and if I open the chart, you will see in the last five years, the stock has given 14% returns only. But in the last one year, the stock has given close to 38% returns. So it seems to have picked up in the last one year, right? Now, if we come back and have a look at the fundamentals of this company, let's go to screener here and let's go to profit and loss account of this company. And you will see that from March 2014, onwards in terms of the revenues it used to be around 25,000 crores it has gone up to 34,000 crore now this growth is not phenomenal at all if we see the data here you will see that from a compounded sales growth perspective last five years is extremely flat one percent last three years five percent trailing 12 month only six percent so there is not much growth in the last few years and that is why you see last five years stock has not given good returns but last one year it is picking up if you look at the compounded profit growth also last few years not really doing well but trailing 12 months 30 percent compounded profit growth rate right that's what we need to note down here from a stock price perspective again last five years has not been good last three years has not been good but last one year 43 percent returns it is picking up now we need to find out why the stock prices are in momentum right now from last one year's perspective but before we do that let's also have a look at the balance sheet of this company and very quickly you will see that in terms of the reserves of this company has gone from 5,000 crore to close to 17,000 crores, right? So they're sitting on really, really huge reserves from a money perspective. Money is not a problem. From a borrowing perspective, it is looking low. 651 crores in the bigger scheme of things is not a huge borrowing. So from a balance sheet perspective, I don't think there is any major issues here. But let me now walk you through why the company is showing growth in terms of the share prices. For that, I'm going to take you to their latest earning presentations call. And if I bring you to that document here, you will see page number three of their earnings presentation call from September quarter. Company is now selling Harley Davidson X440 series and they have delivered close to 2000 units already. So meaning the company is moving towards premiumization of their segments or the products because that is where the money is, right? And their booking for the Harley Davidson, which is well-known brand all over the world, is now sitting at 25,000 plus. They are not able to deliver at the speed at which customers are actually sharing the bookings, right? And this bike to me looks extremely amazing. I don't know whether you're a Harley Davidson fan or not. Let me know in the comments if you like this bike or not. But all in all, they are moving into premiumization. If I come back to the other page here, you will see that Charisma. There is another bike that they sell in the sports segment. Extremely good bike again. That also is showing very good growth. The bookings are running at 14,000, right? So the company is now pivoting into premiumization, right? And they had to, in fact, close the booking window for this charisma as well because of the high growth, right? Now, in terms of if you look at how many they can supply, they are looking at 10,000 per month is what they want to scale to from a capacity perspective. Now, this is a good problem for a company to have where the demand is very high, but they're not able to supply, right? Because that is where the revenue growth is likely to come. That is where the profit growth is likely to come and eventually the share prices will follow both the fundamentals right now here they are saying the profitability in this segment is quite good is what Niranjan Gupta their management personnel is talking about the profitability in this segment that is why this company is moving into these high-end products also if you go to page number four you will see that their stores that they have they are revamping all their stores and they're coming up with hero 2.0 stores because they're moving towards premiumization 
and they want to give that experience to customers from a website perspective, from a customer journey perspective, etc. because they are eventually moving and targeting the premium sector. And this gives me a confidence that the company is putting 1000 crores out of their reserves into the capex, into companies growth, into the premiumization sector, which is extremely important news from a growth perspective. Also, if you go to their page number 17, they have their EV scooter called Vida and the key differentiator of this product is that they have removable batteries and no other product right now in the market has that differentiator. And also they are not yet profitable into the EV sector because it is an industry wide problem right now because the cost of manufacturing a EV scooter right now is very high because of bill of material bomb here that is what they are talking about. But from an EV sector perspective they are looking at 5% volume which is not a bad news to start with. Also, if you look at their part, accessory and merchandising business, which is PAM, if you look at my screen, you will see that 15% of their revenues are coming from that particular business segment. And if you look at their commentary from management, what they're saying is that 1300 crores to 1354 crores is a double digit growth they are seeing in their parts business. Also September month clogged 500 crore rupees of revenue from PAM business, which is highest ever. So that means that they are not only going into the premium sector, their PAM business is also growing in the double digit. That is why primarily their share prices are going up because investors are reading these type of commentaries and they are getting bullish about this company's revenue growth perspective because of the momentum that we are seeing in the commentary of the management. Also, if I touch upon their power brands such as Passion and Splendor and whatnot, go to page number 13, you will see from a passion perspective that is coming back into market big time, the double digit growth is what we are seeing, 2x growth for Passion brand. Also their HF, which is their entry segment motorcycle is also showing double digit growth. These are the points which is making investors bullish about this company. So all in all, from a revenue growth perspective, the company is looking good. But are there any risks with the company? I think two points that I want to quickly call out from my perspective is that if you go and look at their shareholding pattern, you will see that the promoters have low stake in the company, only 34%. Now few investors do not like that. But personally, I'm okay with that because if you see the promoter's stake has stayed almost constant in the last three years but if you are personally not comfortable with low promoter stakes then you might not want to invest in this company although the second thing that i want you to quickly know is that in the recent news it was there that paman munjal who is their promoter there was a money laundering case against him filed by ed in terms of he moving the foreign currency and valuable items worth 54 crores abroad right now i am not saying whether this is true or not but it was there in the news and people who are not comfortable with promoters not having very clean background you might want to keep away from this company but i have presented to you the risks that are there i have presented to you the growth opportunity with this company and it is up to you to make that decision it is not a stock recommendation from my perspective i am really teaching you my methods of how much of detail i go into before i select any stocks i hope you thoroughly enjoyed this video and if you did please like the video let me know in the comments a simple thank you i will see you in my next video until then keep rocking